Hello guys, welcome back to Foolish Engineer YouTube channel. Today we are diving into the world of switch mode power supplies. We'll cover this topic in two different part of video series. Where we'll see what an SMPS is, how it works and how to design it. In this video, we'll cover what is an SMPS, advantages and working of the SMPS, what is a green mode power supply, which specific topology is mostly used in the SMPS and it's working. So without wasting any time, let's start. Well, have you ever wondered how your electronic gadget get the power they need? Well, that's where the SMPS comes into picture. It's a crucial component that enables our modern devices to operate efficiently. If you know what an SMPS is and you have watched our previous videos on it, then you can skip this part. The SMPS is nothing but an AC to DC converter. The SMPS is super efficient. They are very versatile and can be designed to provide different output voltages and current to suit various electronic devices from computers and smartphones to audio amplifiers and more. They have very less heat dissipation they can handle wide input voltages regardless of varying power sources. For easy understanding, let's see the block diagram of the SMPS. The SMPS start with an input AC voltage from the mains power supply. This can vary depending on the region such as 110 volts or 230 volts AC. After that, the first stage of the SMPS is the rectifier. It consists of diodes that convert the incoming AC voltage into pulsating DC voltage. After the rectification, the output is a pulsating DC voltage, which still contains ripples and AC components. The filter stage uses capacitors to smooth out the voltage and reduce the ripples, resulting in a more stable DC voltage. Now, this is the heart of the SMPS which is the high frequency switch, which is typically a power transistor or MOSFET. This component rapidly switches the DC voltage on and off at higher frequencies, usually in the kilohertz or megahertz range. And it converts this DC signal into AC again. This high frequency switch is connected to a transformer. This switching creates a varying magnetic field in the transformer which induces a voltage in the secondary winding. The secondary winding of the transformer produces this AC voltage. The output rectifier, typically diode, convert this AC voltage into smooth DC voltage at the desired output level. Now, just like the input stage, an output capacitor is used to further smooth out the DC voltage and reduce any remaining ripples. It ensures a stable and regulated output. And finally, the control circuit is responsible for regulating the output voltage of the SMPS. It continuously monitors the output voltage and provides feedback to control the switching of the MOSFET, which gives stable output voltage. This section after the input filter is our old friend DC to DC converter. We can use different converter topologies here which we have seen in many of our previous videos. But usually, a flyback converter is used in the SMPS. Why flyback? Well, there are several reasons for that. One of the primary reasons for using it is because of its ability to provide galvanic isolation between the input and output. That means there is no direct electric connection between the input and output making it safer and providing protection against voltage spikes and noise. This is crucial in applications where isolation is mandatory. The flyback converter has a relatively simpler design and it is in compact size compared to other SMPS topologies like forward converters or push-pull converters. It requires fewer components making it cost effective and easier to manufacture. This converter utilizes a transformer to store energy during on time of the switching transistor and then releases this energy during the off time. 
This energy storage capability allows for multiple output or voltage circulation, which is beneficial in various multiple output supply. Flyback converter can easily achieve voltage regulation by controlling the on and off times of the switching transistor. This regulation is achieved through the feedback control, even when the input voltage or load conditions vary. The flyback converters can achieve high efficiency levels, especially at lower power levels. This efficiency is crucial for devices that operate on battery power as it prolongs the battery life. The flyback converter can be used in discontinuous mode, which means the current in the transformer falls to zero during each switching cycle. This results in reduced stress on the components. The flyback converter can handle a wide range of input voltages, making it suitable for application with varying input sources. The flyback converter can be designed to produce lower AMI which is essential in applications where electromagnetic capability is critical. Well, let's brush up a bit how a flyback converter works. If you have already seen our previous videos and you know how it works, you can skip this part. This is how a flyback converter looks like. So assuming we get the filtered DC voltage at the input of the flyback converter. This is the MOSFET, which is the active switch and we connect a high frequency transformer primary at the input and on the secondary side we connect a passive switch like diode. There is one thing that we need to keep in mind. The transformer in the flyback converter is not exactly a transformer. It is basically a coupled inductor. Let's see how it works. First, this MOSFET switch is turned on, allowing current to flow through the primary winding of the transformer. During this time, the transformer stores energy in its magnetic field. Now we turn off the MOSFET, causing the magnetic field to collapse. During this time, the voltage is induced on the secondary side due to stored energy in the primary. The polarity of the induced voltage would be this. Because of that, this diode would get forward biased and will get the rectified output voltage here resulting in a smooth DC output. This cycle repeats continuously providing PWM to this MOSFET. The input and output voltage relation depends on the primary and secondary side of the turns. Well, we understood the importance of the SMPS and what is it made of. Now we'll start the design process of an SMPS using a flyback converter. We'll design it such that it can drive 25 watts power will design a green mode power supply. This type of power supply is used to reduce energy consumption and minimize the wasted power if the connected load is very low or on standby mode only. Let's take an example. You're having a romantic date with your partner and you plan Netflix and chill. You started a romantic movie, but after some time you get in the mood to chill and you pause the movie and go somewhere else for better comfort. You should not go down and turn off the TV. Trust me, it will ruin the moment. Just pause it. Boys, take some notes. Now you are chilling for a very long time. So your smart TV will then go to standby mode. Its display will turn off and during this time, it will consume very less power and as soon as you come back, you can start where you left off. You don't have to turn on the TV, navigate through different streaming apps and then start your show again. So during this standby time, a green mode power supply comes into picture. There are different ways to achieve this type of power supply. Minimizing the power loss is the biggest concern for our design. So we'll design a circuit which will minimize this hassle as much as possible. So I'll design this SMPS using TI's UCC28610 IC, which is a green mode flyback power supply controller. This IC can be used for AC to DC converter supply application that require low AC line power during no load and high average efficiency. This controller works in discontinuous conduction mode. Well, there are two types of conduction modes in a DC to DC converter. 
continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode. In CCM, the current in the magnetic parts like uh, inductor and transformer never drops to zero during the off time. In DCM, the inductor current drops to zero during the off time of the switching transistor. There are several advantages of designing a DCM mode control such as reduced switching losses. In DCM, the switching losses are generally lower because of the switching frequency is reduced compared to the CCM. DCM can be easier to control since it operates in a discontinuous manner. This simplicity can lead to a simpler and cost-effective control circuitry. And finally, DCM is more efficient at lighter loads because of the reduced conduction and switching power loss. Let's see the feature of this IC. It drives external high voltage MOSFET through the source, which means instead of providing PWM to the gate of the MOSFET, we control the switch through its source pin. This configuration is called a cast code driver. Because of that, we get fast startup and low input power under no load conditions. This cast code driver has no effect on the general operation of the flyback converter. The feedback of this IC uses current signals rather than voltage. This feature minimizes the primary side power consumption during no load operation by avoiding external resistive conversion from the optocoupler. Because of this, this particular IC makes quite efficient SMPS. Well, we have learned how the SMPS works, why flyback converters are mostly used, and what is a green mode power supply. We also selected a PWM IC using which we'll design this SMPS circuit. In the next video, we'll start the design of this SMPS. I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get the updates on next video. I'll see you next time. Till then, stay hungry, stay foolish.